do history. I'd like to take history of Mr. Ryfort. Oh, okay. Oh, I see we have some new students here with us today. My name is Ryfort. I'll be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. History is a wonderful thing, truly splendid. The lives of our ancestors throughout history forge the path to the present in which we live. Today, you shall learn about the most mysterious location in all of Paldea, the Great Crater. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the heart of our region. The area inside the crater is called Area Zero, and research and research of its geological strata and material comp composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. I like how in the back it's showing you um, some little pictures from uh, Legends of Arceus with like their Pokeballs and even the uh, professor back then. It was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of the mysterious crater. Ah, perfect timing to make eye contact, young Tevin. Answer me this. What exactly was believed to rest in the depths of the great crater inside Area Zero? A fucking... uh... treasure? Ha, <laughs> that is correct. You are a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? I see you did your homework. No, because the other two questions didn't make any sense. I see you did your homework prior to coming to class. That's right, some believe that our treasure more valuable than anything else in this world rested in the depths of the Great Crater. So much for dreams of treasure hunting though, as a lab has been built has been built in those very same depths. Oh, and before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Crater and Area Zero are both off limits to all but those who have official business there. Do not dare entertain the foolish notion of gallivanting off to Area Zero in search of riches. It is no place for children dreaming of treasure and adventures. We're probably- we're definitely going to go there. So we'll probably be like, maybe like, um, once we find our treasure, or we like, you know, do one of the other five things. I want to say like, once you become like champion rank, then it's like, alright, since you're champion rank, you probably can survive in Area Zero. Besides, if it were all at all possible to investigate the area, I surely would be the first to do so. Okay. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Okay, so history's not too bad, but it's definitely going to be something. You're going to have to guess at. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under the rule of the Paldea Empire. I didn't realize they had an empire, Paldean Empire. Historical accounts describe the Paldean Emperor as being quite the dictator. This emperor also zealously believe the legend of the treasure that rests deep within Area Zero. I must mention that the civilizations of our ancestors were not as developed as ours is today. People back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends, magic, and beings beyond human comprehension. In an attempt to gain the power to stand against Paldea's neighboring countries, the Emperor sent people in droves to join the hunt for the fabled treasure of Area Zero. Oh my god, you're about to ask me a question. Ha, ah, perfect time to make eye contact, young Tevin. Answer me this. Approximately how many years ago was it that the Paladin Empire began to rule this region? I don't fucking know. You just said it like... Oh, approximately how many years ago was it? that the Empire began to... Was it a thousand? Incorrect, you're off by an entire millennium. Why, 1,000 years ago, the Paladin Empire had already begun to... Oh, so 2,000, okay. 
The answer is about 2,000 years ago. That is when the great era of exploration began. However, it is said that not a single adventure sent out by the Emperor ever reached the depths of Area Zero. Was it the punishing journey itself that barred their way, or perhaps some unknown creature? The resounding failure of this great era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air of mystery surrounding the crater. Uh, what I wouldn't give to explore Era Zero in its untouched state of, at that time. I suppose I can only hope for the swift invention of a time machine. Or Arceus. Oh, is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. Since today's lessons, we'll elaborate more of history and this together next time. Alright, so it's 2,000 years ago for the Paldean Empire. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the models that history has presented to us. As you should remember from our last class, Era Zero's Great Era of Exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was ever able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paldea Empire fell, fell into decline. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the foundation of Paldea as we know it today. Ah yes, this very academy where you are now filling your young minds with the knowledge was also apparently established at that time. In fact, the school building, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built so long ago. This very structure is a piece of history. Ha! Things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer not to have the Pokeball portion, though, a relatively new edition. I don't see what's wrong with the Pokeball edition. Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Tevin. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me, approximately how many years ago was this candy of ours? It was 800 years ago. I hate nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. This academy was constructed exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. At the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities and uniquely innovative curriculum. As such, people used to say, those seeking knowledge need to look no further than the grapes of Paldea. That's right, they were referring to Yuva Academy. It's said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside the Paldea region. Oh, is that the time already? Most guns swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. The Sensei's lesson, our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Greetings, my little students, it is time for our midterm examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. Uh, what is the name of the geological formation in the center of the Paldea region? It is the Great Crater of Paldea. What was long believed to rest in the death of Arizero? It was treasure. How many years ago did the Paldea Empire begin to rule this region? Approximately 2,000 years ago. How many years ago was this academy built? 805 years ago. Those seeking uh, knowledge, ha, it's like a Triforce reference. Power, courage, knowledge, well, wisdom, you know. Um, those seeking knowledge need to look no further than the Great Spodea. Your time is up. Putting, or put your writing utensils down. That last question was a freebie. Even the least capable of you surely padded your score there. I sincerely hope you did anyway. Someone's our midterm examination. You may ask us for your scores at the school's front desk. Feels great to get a test out the way, doesn't it? Let's look at your results. Uh huh, we already know that. And the results for a history test. You answered 5 out of 5 questions correctly. 
And we got five small EX candies. Alright, so we got four more plants left. Uh, your languages. Don't work our way down the list. So, your languages will be with Mr. Salvatore. I wonder what this one looks like. My dear students, how are you all today? Feeling good, I hope. Uh, Jamila Papel Salvatore. My name is Salvatore. Merci beaucoup. That is, thank you very much for your attention here in my class. I'm so hu or happy for this chance to re-experience my younger days with you all. Do you know that Salvatore means? It means savior. So just imagine I'm here to save you from spooky new languages. Haha. <laughs> Funny, no? We're not amused. That's right, my classes will teach you about the various languages from different regions. You may say good morning or hello as a greeting, but people from elsewhere may say bonjour or salut. I've heard there's even a popular streamer out there who smashes several languages together and says hello, hello, hola, ciao, and bonjour. There are so many regions out there in our world, and each can have their own unique languages. Gracias, merci, zinche. Origato, donkey. These are all. These all have the same meaning. Can you guess what it is? Uh, thank you. What? Tevin was it? Bravo! That is correct. And speaking up is important in language language in language learning too. Gracias, merci. Th those all. Those words all mean thank you. I guess some of you probably. I knew at least one of the yes, I did. I knew gracias, and <laughs> that's how I put the connection. Despite meaning the same thing, their lengths and sounds are all different. Isn't that interesting? And now, a props of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. When you travel abroad, you should try to speak the local language as much as you can, even if you can't speak it very well. I'm sure your willingness to try will make the people you meet très heureux, very happy. I know I'm pronouncing this French words wrong, I'm just doing the best I can, so keep that in mind. Honestly, from my experience, just being able to say hello, delicious, and thank you in a local language will get you pretty far. For everything else, just pretend you're a Mr. Mime and gesture away. Oh, there's that pesky bell. I guess that's all the time we have for today. Well, adios! Mamata and nene. Anu See you later next, everyone. Um, I'm. My dear friends, how are you all today? Feeling absolutely fantastic, I hope. It's time for Salvatore's language lessons. Are you ready, everyone? You can answer with yes or oi. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say thank you in other languages, correct? Uh-oh. That, those words. Today's class, we will learn about a certain word sure to make people happy when you use it in your travels abroad. What word, you ask? Well, you'll have to guess. Uh, can anyone tell what these were? Fuck. Uh, the first word kind of looks like delicious. Okay, correct. I knew I could count on you, Tevin. Uh, all those words mean delicious. Using the local word for delicious at markets or restaurants is sure to be a big soiree, a smile, that is, for everyone you're talking to, or whoever you're talking to. It will make communication go more smoothly, I guarantee it. People love it when someone says the cuisine of their homeland is delicious. Who wouldn't be happy to receive such a compliment? And now, a purpose of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. 
the first step to smooth communication is to compliment the person you're talking to. After all, it's not very likely that a compliment will put someone in a bad mood. This doesn't only apply to people in other regions either. It's the same for all of you too. You can put this tip to use with your classmates. How about you all try complimenting each other at the class? I bet it'll make for an ambiance plus sympathy, sympathetic, a more friendly atmosphere. That's all for today. See you all. Uh, for Kang Pours? Next lesson, that is. Adios. My dear friends, how are you all today? You certainly look fantastic. It's time for another lesson of Salvatore's language lessons. Are you ready? Ahem. Are you ready? Uh, boy. Very good. My lessons are not a one-way street. No, no. I am très triste when no one speaks up. Very sad, that is. You look more annoyed than sad. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say delicious other languages, right? Uh, today's class, we will learn about a very special phrase you can put to use when the time is just right. Jesus, does anyone know what these <laughs> favorite phrases mean? Uh, time to eat, I love you, I'm going home. Uh, when well, it's just right? I can be, uh, I will. Mmm. Did I love you? Oh, really? Correct! You deserve a, a gold medal. These three phrases you may know, I think. Why? Because they're all quite famous ways to say I love you. I didn't know that. Oh my, have I embarrassed you all, my friends? What timid little restaurants it? Shy boys and girls, that is. It's so very important to express your feelings about things to others you know. This is especially true for positive emotions. If you get married someday and argue with your spouse over some silly little thing, all you have to do is apologize and say I love you, and all will be well, that is. Not necessarily true. In most cases, yes. Yeah, sometimes it might be a little bit deeper than what I love you can actually fix. Just saying. Just saying. I should know why just last week I had a big argument with my familia, my dear wife, that is. But I was qu I was quick to say I'm sorry and all was well. And now, I propose some nothing. Let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. It is best to be quick to apologize when you have an argument with someone. That goes for your families, friends, and your crushes. I know you all can do it. I believe in you. Our next class will be the midterm exam. Be sure to review what we learned in all our lessons so far. I'll use my mate. Okay, this one might actually give me a little bit of trouble. Today, we take our midterm exam. Relax, that is, and do your best. Are you ready? Well, let's begin. Gracias, origato, merci. These all have the same meanings. Uh, thank you. Which of the following phrases means delicious? Uh, de kill. Which of these phrases, which of these phrases don't belong? Uh, fuck. God damn it. I don't. I would say time to eat is the trick one just because it's not in a different language like everyone else. But, it might, oh, god damn it. When speaking with a person, what is the first step to smooth communication? Uh, compliment them. What is your beloved teacher's name? Salvatore. So I'm not getting a 5 out of 5. I, I'm definitely confident I could at least get a 4 out of 5, but that answer fuck. Question number 4 really got me. But I just need three answers correctly that actually passed the midterm, so I'm not too big tripping on it. I know I got four right. Feels great to get a test out the way. Let's take a look at the results. We got four out of five questions correct. 
That's the fastest score, congratulations. And I still get a 5 HP candy, so oh my god, that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs>